This is a pretty cool build. Now you've seen me, I don't know if you've watched the YouTube video, but you've seen how this build come together. Now, Creative Conversions, which are the guys that do this type of conversion, where they take a wagon, a 300 series Land Cruiser wagon, and they convert it into a dual cab ute. They've been doing it for years, and I had one of the first ever conversions they did to a 200 series Land Cruiser. Mate, that thing was an absolute weapon of a truck. V8 diesel, 650 mil extension, had canopy on the back, fully tuned to the eyeball, that was an absolute weapon. There's no more 200 series Land Cruisers. Toyota aren't making them. So now the focus is on the 300 series and that's what Creative Conversions have done. They have taken all that knowledge that they learned from the 200 and they've now put it into the 300. I guess you're wondering how well did this conversion go because I'm hearing a few little whispers out there. Everyone's like, oh, the 300, it can't be as good as the, as the 200. The 200's got the big V8 and surely they, got, they put a smaller, well, I'll tell you what, I'm here today to explore some of those myths and first-hand real-world experience where I have taken this 300 series conversion and put it into some of the toughest tracks in Australia. Some of that terrain that we tackled for season 15, mate, was next level. 10 days on one of those tracks to do 400 kilometres. Some of the toughest terrain that All For Adventure had ever done. So reliability. Now the 200 series Land Cruiser, you would have seen me putting it through its paces and it was quite a reliable truck, okay? Other than a few breakages here and there from some tail shafts, the thing was a tough bit of gear. Wow, the one thing I noticed about the 300 I never had any dramas either. So there's none of that electronic, you know, pain in the neck. Oh, there's, this is coming up, that's not happy, it's not happy. I never had any of that. It's the GXL Land Cruiser package when it comes a wagon and it's got all the fruit on it, but I didn't have to deal with any of that. So I found it really easy. The fact that when they do this conversion, mate, they cut the back off this wagon and all that super electronic type stuff and gadgetry that we've got these days, they were able to configure it and put it into this dual cab package without any of those dramas. Next would be the power. The 300 twin turbo V6 has got some serious grunt. Yeah, baby! <laughs> Mate, the thing didn't have a problem with power, I'll tell you now. Towing or not towing, it didn't matter. Mate, one thing I noticed, it's got some serious torque. I got to drive it for half the season, Jesse drove it for the other half. Now, what I found with the twin turbo V6, I actually found it had more power and more go than the 200, and the 200 is actually dialed right up. Now, the other thing is the ramp over, and a lot of people do talk about the ramp over. Now, ramp over means you've got an extended chassis and you're gonna struggle in off-road conditions because you're gonna fail in the middle there when you're ramping over those type of conditions. Well, I'll tell you what, mate, again, put it through some of its paces with 33-inch tires on this build. Admittedly, it probably could have done with a little bit more of a lift or maybe I could have put some bigger tires on it, but in this form, I didn't drag it around. I didn't feel as though it was dragging its chassis around. I know that the long range tank may have copped a couple of little dints on it because it's sitting there, right there on the, on the line of the chassis. Oh, scraping, scraping. The shock mounts at the back copped a little bit of a flogging. The diff at the rear copped a bit of a, a knock as well because we went through some tough, hardcore rock country. The other thing, okay, is what I found is it had the ability to carry the load. So a lot of people were worried that they wouldn't be able to tow the, the, get the numbers, the GCM, the GVMs and all that sort of stuff. Well, I'll tell you what, they actually made those numbers quite easily. And the reason for that is they lightened the vehicle itself. So the wagon itself was a lot lighter than the 200 because they used space age materials. They're using aluminium these days where, you know, the likes of America, in America, a lot of those Ford trucks, they were using aluminium for years. So Toyota have just got onto that bandwagon, but the fact that they're using aluminium in, in some of the parts makes them a lot lighter. So from the real world testing that we gave it, 
I also found that the suspension was really stable. Like it had that ability on the bitumen, okay, whether it had a load in it or not load in it, and also in the dirt. And off-roading in low range in that, those conditions, it really thrived. Now, it's got that high-tech off-road, you know, where you can set the conditions and all that. That makes a difference with these vehicles these days, and I found that really good. Creative Conversions have put together one hell of a truck and the 300 Series Land Cruiser, mate, performed really well, and I'm gonna have to say, and you probably don't wanna hear this, it's better than the 200.